the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Jesus Christ. Please be seated if you can. The power of God is going to come upon a lady outside with a loud shout. Please pick that lady and bring her here. I know that our time is gone. Outside, not just inside. Sheila Sobrandagato Sieta. Psalm 92 and verse 10. Psalm 92, verse 10. Shali Parus I want to share very briefly on the subject of the anointing as I was given as a topic. I believe that there is so much that the body of Christ needs to learn about the dynamics and the operation of the anointing. Whilst we commend the body of Christ for having gone far in understanding the ministry of the Holy Spirit, I will respectfully observe that there is still a lot more about the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the operations of the anointing and that is because many people are more interested in walking in it than studying it and so many people have experiences captured within their Christian life that they cannot explain they cannot give meaning they just know that people fall down in my meetings people shout I feel fire in my hands I feel cold I just know it is from the Holy Spirit and yet because we do not give attention to study these things there is hardly mastery as far as the operation of the anointing is concerned in our lives please when the power of God comes upon that lady outside um, I want you to bring her in I want to speak and I want to prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing light just casting on this side and it's please hold on we're going to pray and it's an impartation it's a grace for the prophetic just on this row please bring them out I'm seeing a grace for the prophetic God wants to shift people into very strange dimensions in the spirit please bring them out you will never be the same Shalas for some of you what you saw in your dreams are about happening you've seen them in dreams and visions will you open up the gate Open up the doors Will you open up the gates Open up the doors A new dimension is opening to someone in the spirit Open up the gates 
Shalala hasala baruti ya shalala My dear, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. The Spirit of God is saying, Behold, I do a new thing. Please be careful with her. Don't drag her. In the name of Jesus, I declare for you and for your loved ones, the old is rolled away like the curtain. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I cast away every spirit that impedes your growth and your advancement in this kingdom. I declare you are delivered now in the name of Jesus Christ bring the people laughing in the spirit it's not just some religious gibberish it is an operation of the spirit that I'm hoping at the end of this conference we will understand it's a laughter in the spirit please bring them the power of God come upon them in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah just be patient with me a minute and we'll be seated the Bible says the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from the tent of the righteous let me prophesy to someone here in the name of jesus i come tonight by the rod of a higher priesthood that every challenge that has stood before you in the name of the lord god whose i am it will fall like dagon before the act it will fall like dagon before the act tonight hallelujah ebenezer who is ebenezer Ebenezer you're wearing a blue and a cream shirt blue and cream no blue and cream it's like a short shirt there is a blue patch and cream who is that what is your name Ebenezer you're a member of this church I want to pray for you my friend you love Jesus the spirit of prayer and supplication is coming upon you. I stretch my hands. May that grace come upon you. Let it take you to untold dimensions in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, you receive of that grace. You will never be the same. My friend, I want to pray for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the Lord revealed me to you. And I'm speaking to you. For you and for your family, January is a season of strange breakthrough for your family. I release that grace upon you right now in the name of Jesus Christ and that everything that stands between you and prophecy I clear it out of the way in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ the healing anointing I don't know you this gentleman you're a man of God lift your hands in the name of Jesus the Lord is telling me that he's introducing you to a dimension of the ministry of the Holy Spirit and you will experience the healing power of Jesus in a strange way father in the name of Jesus a new grace fresh dimension in the spirit let this unction rest upon you and turn you into a sign and a wonder please be seated God bless you Psalm 92 and verse 10 let's see how the Lord will help us But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Grant us illumination by the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Conferences like these are opportunities by the grace of God to expose the body of Christ to dimensions of the kingdom the kingdom is built and it's made up of systems and God mandates that we study these operations one by one so that we can gain mastery and that our Christian lives will become fruitful and productive it is for this cause that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers 
for the maturing of the saints hallelujah praise the name of the lord second timothy chapter 1 verse 9 tells us that we are all called every believer in christ is called please give it to us the bible says who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling so every believer in christ is called for as long as you have been grafted into christ through the experience of the new birth the bible says that you are called you are called it's an initiation into a life of victory a life of purpose a life that represents the christ himself second peter 1 and verse 10 tells us that we are not only called but we are chosen and then it says that it is within our responsibility to give diligence look up please to make your calling and make your election the word election is still the word chosen are we together now that it is within your power and it's provable the times that we live in now will no longer allow noise and stories of a god who was and a historic god we need to be able to demonstrate the reality of this life that we so propose we've said so many things about god in conferences in conventions there are so many advocacies about who he is and what he can do and then the world is standing in their arrogance and waiting and saying until you can demonstrate the validity of all you are talking we consider you noisemakers philosophers they say hallelujah in luke chapter 4 the bible says that jesus came to the temple and the scroll of Isaiah was given to him where he wrote the messianic prophecy isaiah 61 jesus speaking that scroll he began to read it before them that the spirit of the lord is upon me he said for he hath anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted he said to deliver them that are in bondage he said all those things i'm quoting that scripture and this guy is getting delivered now this one is the power of god this is not a sermon when he was done he said this day is this scripture fulfilled and he saw a woman with a withered hand and said if it is true that i am the messiah that is talked about let that reality be here and now madam stretch forth your hand the bible says that the greeks seek for a sign have you read that scripture that we live in a time where men and women will not just believe for nothing there has to be a dimension of the reality of god there is too much speaking too much speaking not teaching too much speaking propositions of what god can do god can do we wet the appetite of people like the fig tree and we cause them to come and they come there with nothing God is able to change your life we say I'm not being sarcastic God is able to lift you and many times we are well-meaning we don't mean to deceive them we are sincere but we go back and say God but why what is this what is this I gave my best I called for a healing meeting I called the sick to come they waited from morning till night and they went back I called sinners to come I told them there is a savior that can save and while I was teaching what I believe the Bible says is the power of God unto salvation that while that teaching is going on the sinners were watching like this unconverted untouched by the message are you blessed we propose that as believers and as men of God he has put something in our lips that when we utter words upon the lives of people we can create a system of blessing upon them but how many times do we continue to speak the Lord bless you the Lord lift you may your life change they say amen meaning they believe but they don't return with results can I tell you this 
there has to be a dimension of the grace of God that must be displayed in the land of Asaba to bring principalities and powers hear what I tell you there has to be a dimension of the reality of the spirit that you will see people on the streets conversions a, 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 an effulgence of power that on Sunday the streets and the shops are closed because men and women will have to go to God there is there is a dimension of the power of the Spirit of God he said when I came to you I did not come with the excellency of speech because the morale is not to show you I'm a great orator but to demonstrate to you that there is a kingdom that is provable here and now why should I not go to a harbor list when I'm desperate for a solution and you told me that I should stay and go to God and I'm staying to God while my loved one is dying listen we have no right to question the alternatives until we demonstrate the authentic right now it looks like a mockery when you say you are in ministry when you say you are a man of God this is what society interprets I am a nuisance to civilization I am a nuisance to intellectualism I am a nuisance to to sociological development we are this group of religious bigots that have come to interrupt status quo when has it been that the church is said that you are the light of the world that means the definition of darkness is a territory without the church when a man of god comes to a house and knocks and says peace be unto you the people in the house are already offended because in their mind they feel this this money grabbers have come with their false and negative prophecies to mislead us and collect money oh come on please that there is a dimension of grace that as you are knocking at the door of someone without knowing what the problem is the spiritual climate that you carry is announcing something to the realm of the spirit that the age-long captivity that that family is under should go can I tell you this the lifetime of transformation when you see Jesus you need only one encounter there were few times in scripture where people had to encounter him twice to be transformed one solid genuine encounter please sit down so the Bible says we are called everybody say I am called you are a believer in Christ according to the authority of scripture it says you are called it's a holy calling the Bible says but then the Bible says just proposing that you are called will not bring God glory and that our lives will continue to be barren like the fig tree then he says give us that scripture again first Timothy second Timothy second Peter sorry one and verse 10 it says wherefore help us second Peter one and verse 10 media wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make now women understand this when they say make rice that means take responsibility and bring together the ingredients if I say madam make for me fried rice the first assignment of that woman is to go to the market was that not what he said go and buy from them that sell that means there are people that sell it if, if you are desperate enough there are men who have been custodians of that dimension you seek the parable of the ten virgins he said go the one we have is not enough go to the market there are people who sell it buy from them you don't buy with money you buy with meekness you buy with honor you buy with discernment that you can carry the currency of meekness the currency of honor 
the currency of discernment to say i discern that you are one of the privileged stewards that has been given this to sell to give to make available so it says make your calling and your election sure man of god make your calling and your election sure believer make your calling that means when this word comes your first assignment is what are the ingredients required to make this ministry potent oh god you called me into a prophetic ministry every prophecy i've given people said is a lie i must go back to the drawing room in the spirit what are the graces what are the dimensions of light i need to form that ministry to make my calling and my election sure You've called me to be a kingdom financier. There is a dimension of kingdom wealth I do not know. My life continues to represent failure even though I am called. So when men doubt your call, don't be afraid. Their, 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 their doubt should push you to go back and say, Lord, these people are justified until my results prove otherwise. Are we blessed? Lord, you have called me to demonstrate the reality of the spirit to a territory. And yet darkness continues to loom across that territory even with my presence. That means I need to go back to the drawing board in the spirit with the assignment to make my calling and my election sure don't forget this message tonight is a message that culture's responsibility that waiting for god to just anoint you arbitrarily waiting for prophecy to find its way to happen you will wait forever you have to take responsibility tonight and say in the name of jesus i will find whatever the ingredients are i will pay that price go and buy from them that sell go and buy from them that sell there are stewards who have been given this assignment hallelujah you have malls within your town and when you want to buy household products you don't go to a carpenter for instance when you want to buy food ingredients there are people who sell food and sometimes you are even fortunate they have a place designated already to make it easy for you when you go to ShopRite or any of your malls, they, they even label it for you to make your search easy. That if what you want are beverages and so on and so forth, there is a plethora of them for your choice. That means if your calling and your election is not sure, is accredited to pride, lack of discernment, lack of meekness, and maybe sheer laziness. Every dimension of grace, every dimension of revelation we seek to represent Christ to his fullness is available within the body. But it does not come to you, you search. The proof of passion is pursuit. That when you are passionate about a dimension and a thing, you seek it. I believe in the name of Jesus that your coming and your sacrifice to sit in and outside is proof that you are tired of your current level and that you desire something that is real and provable to come upon your life. I believe that the, the, the Holy Spirit is in partnership with our bishop and the men and women of God within this city to say Maranatha, let a new dimension of glory come. Let a new dimension of power come. Let a new dimension of the investment of the Spirit upon this land come come Lord Jesus come come revival come come signs and wonders come come salvation come come baptisms come come revelation and spiritual intelligence there has to be a people it is the spirit and the bride that says come it is not only the spirit alone the spirit can say come and the bride in Asaba is refusing to echo that same word when the spirit says come the bride must also say come the spirit and the bride say come are we blessed so this conference is an attempt to bring to our lives one of the major ingredients that can help a believer make his calling and his election sure.
now does it does it make sense to you what i'm teaching because just teaching about the anointing arbitrarily is what has produced the immaturity that we see in the body of christ today because people have access to dimensions of grace without purpose they do not even know to what end it is so there, there is a a display and a galore of flesh but when we connect these teachings to kingdom come and to a bigger spiritual cause then you now see that your desiring the anointing has now come under alignment to a greater cause to see christ revealed to see christ glorified more than just making a name the lord i love you so much i want to see your life and your glory lifted and 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 revealed within my territory according to galatians 1 24 that man will glorify god in me and because of that agenda to prove to creation that you are god to be a witness indeed a validator of your power your grace it is for that reason that i seek the anointing it is for that reason that i fast it is for that reason that i pray because i love you and i want to see creation give you glory that it will not be in my lifetime that people will say where is this god are we blessed the anointing when jesus began to mentor the disciples isn't it amazing men of god that when you read the gospels you will hardly aside from the recitation of the messianic prophecy you don't hear the mention of the anointing there you don't even hear the mention of spiritual power there are few times jesus talked about that because the major ingredient was to supply spiritual knowledge he knew that introducing them to the anointing would destroy them and so he kept them to mentor them because the anointing reflects your level of spiritual illumination when you get the anointing and your mind is not transformed the the way you will operate will make it look as though it's the anointing making you behave that way and yet it is lack of transformation so the more transformed you are the more you are giving the anointing space to find expression are we blessed the anointing what is the anointing let's define it and then we'll just share a few things thank you jesus <laughs> Isaiah 10 27 Isaiah 10 27 please give it to us media help us and it shall come to pass in that day someone say this is that day that his burden shall be taken from off your shoulder read with me please and his yoke from off thy neck uh-huh and the yoke shall be destroyed because that when you introduce something to that yoke the yoke will be destroyed the yoke does not get destroyed on its own but there is a spiritual factor that when you introduce to that yoke the bible says the yoke is destroyed and the reason is because of the anointing please write this down the anointing is a system of ordination and authorization the anointing is a spiritual system of ordination and authorization you may want to write the anointing legitimizes your representing God on earth the anointing has nothing to do with oil necessarily the anointing has nothing to do with touching people's head the anointing is a spiritual system that was invented by the intelligence of god as a system of ordination legitimizing your representing him on earth so that all the powers of darkness and indeed creation will respond to you because they know that you are operating on legal grounds you were authorized 
so he says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he had ordained me he had authorized my operation hallelujah you have I, I saw a few security people outside when a military man wears his uniform that uniform is a system of authorization is that true it legitimizes him you don't find a military man in his uniform holding a rifle and then you question him because the uniform permits that he holds a rifle but when you just see an ordinary man like that you have to go to the court of law to verify whether that territory allows the use of rifles so when you walk to creation and say seek be healed blind eyes open destinies be transformed believers i supply you light the realm of the spirit will ask you back where is your authorization because as as creation we were designed to obey but not obey everyone we obey people that carry a badge of authorization and we see this in jesus we see this in paul but all oh, sons of skiva where is your authorization so it's not just enough to speak it's not just enough to do ministry the anointing therefore is god's way of legitimizing your operations on earth god's way of legitimizing your representing him are we together yes and the bible tells us theologically speaking that there are two dimensions of the anointing the first according to scripture sorry i'm rushing because i want us to close on time first john chapter 2 and verse 27 it is called the anointing that is within you it says but the anointing which you have received that means you were not born with it you have received of him abided in you and ye need ye need not that any man teach you do you know what that means look up please that there is an anointing you receive that becomes an authorization for the holy spirit to carry out his ministry in your life and build you when you read isaiah 61 is a very interesting rendition that many of us may not have paid attention to it says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he hath anointed me so when you read it well you will say because he has anointed me the spirit of the lord has now come upon me are you getting the word now it is not just that the spirit of the lord brought the anointing that there was an authorization that allowed him on legal grounds to come to my life and the bible says that one of those anointings is the anointing within and that the assignment please keep that scripture that the assignment of that anointing is to make sure that you are enlightened spiritually that that anointing is responsible for delivering to you all of the spiritual packages that are responsible for your personal growth this is not the anointing for ministry this is not the anointing for your office it is because of this anointing that you can place a demand and say let scripture be open there is an anointing within you that is responsible for your growth back to the scripture please help us it says that what the anointing teaches you is true so it is an anointing within you that drives you to fast for three days and you are just fasting it is part of your spiritual growth processes there is an anointing within you that compels the holy spirit to drive you to go to church to come for fellowship i was glad when they said to me there is an anointing that causes that gladness are we together but the second dimension of the anointing the investment of god's power that it comes upon you and it is primarily to equip you for kingdom service acts chapter 1 and verse 8 but you shall receive power he says after that the holy ghost is come upon you 
and that power that comes upon you will make you witnesses validators it will make you prove the reality of my existence witnesses unto me in jerusalem please give us acts chapter 1 and verse 8 in judea in samaria it says and unto the uttermost part of the earth that is the anointing that comes upon you and empowers you to represent the purposes of christ as a businessman as a student as a minister of the gospel as a politician one in government it doesn't matter what is the geography of your assignment that when the power and the anointing that is upon you it legitimizes your operation you can represent the purposes of god in its fullness the anointing is responsible for results in the life of a believer please understand this when you find believers that produce uncommon results in their personal spiritual growth and as far as representing the purposes of god are concerned that there is an unction there is an anointing from heaven in fact in ancient times you never sent anyone to do any assignment for the kingdom remember again you find it in exodus you find it in leviticus again and again call aaron and call his sons and anoint them every time god found a man to use him he would use the priest or the prophet to anoint that person through the medium of oil that when that oil comes upon that person the spirit of god will come and empower that person to walk in supernatural dimensions and in the name of jesus christ the anointing for your destiny will locate you this night and rest upon your life and turn you into a sign and a wonder yeah. now please sit down the anointing is responsible for efficiency in this kingdom you cannot be efficient until the requisite level of the anointing is upon you god has called you into a ministry you cannot be efficient until the requisite level of the anointing comes upon you god has called you into business and finances you cannot be efficient until the requisite level of grace is upon you look at me please when you see people do uncommon things it is because there is a dimension of grace that is not given to men or not fabricated by men that is upon them you may want to write this definition of the anointing therefore that the anointing is God's ability a second definition the anointing is God's ability at work in a human or material vessel God's ability at work in a human or material vessel causing that vessel to produce God's dimension of results God's ability at work in a human or material vessel causing that vessel to produce God's dimension of results are we together as a normal human being you cannot speak to someone and say in the name of Jesus go return with a result you don't have that power as a human as a, as a natural man it is not given to you but there is an engracing from heaven that can come upon you and when you speak is as though it is God speaking and because he's the one who has empowered you he will back what you have said and ensures that the people return with the results as spoken Genesis 21 and verse 1 please give it to us Genesis 21 and verse 1 let's read it together if we can see it Genesis 21 and verse 1 please read with me one to read and the Lord visited Sarah as he has said uh-huh and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken so he said it and then he did it the anointing is the doing agency of the spirit that is more than just saying it when you say it, there is an agency that goes to work that anointing 
that God speaks to you and say in the name of Jesus I will give you your space Rehoboth within the city and when he speaks the anointing moves and begins to shift systems and structures until that which was spoken the anointing has an assignment to ensure do you know the anointing is like a messenger the word of God carries it the word of God is like a tray a tray does not carry nothing a tray carries something when you want to serve me water and you want to show that you honor me you don't hold the water in a cup you take it in a tray is that true a tray can carry many things it can carry rice or swallow it can carry water it can carry juice so when i see a tray coming i start rejoicing because i know something is on that tray are you getting now this is a union between the word and the anointing for a very long time in the body of christ we have been confused as to the synergy of the operation of what we call the word of god and the anointing so we have sects that believe the anointing it's not just about the word of god is anointing and there are others that say forget all that nonsense is the word that created the heavens and the earth both of them are not wrong they are just incomplete the word of god is the tray that carries all of the spiritual packages so when you see the word of god coming to you you know are we together now yes. the anointing when he sends his word a messenger is coming to you coming to you with packages coming to you with spiritual things God's ability let me tell you this brothers and sisters God will never give you an assignment on earth that is normal for mere men to do you know it is God speaking when your power cannot do it when you hear something that is within your power to do it's just your mind speaking to you when God is speaking he will say have you built the church this is God speaking God speaks to men like he's speaking to himself Bishop he doesn't speak to men like he's speaking to men because it is his ability that will make it come to pass so he will say go to that family tear down the hands of darkness uproot overturn and reveal Jesus and you are wondering this is a hundred year captivity over that family it's because you are looking at yourself oh warm Jacob but there is an ability from heaven that can rest upon you and you go as one sent that I am a messenger and you open that door and they say who are you oh Jesus you are only 33 years old and he says no what is upon me is ancient That there are men and women here who will carry graces and for some of you by tomorrow when you come to stand behind your pulpit they think it's the pastor of last week about to preach two weeks ago you said be blessed and they came back with nothing and you're about to say it again master we have toiled all night but you were toiling in the flesh nevertheless the messenger is coming coming with something that can make you catch abundance of fish listen let me tell you this we're about to pray shortly when the lord began to train me and build me in ministry he opened my eyes to see the futility of doing ministry in the flesh i found out that if i continue to do ministry in the flesh it will make you angry jealous you will fight people you will be a nuisance to the advancement of god's kingdom and so among the many things that he taught me he said contend with the anointing until you take something that is provable to a generation and let me tell you this you will not always have the time to press the way you are pressing now so whatever sacrifice you can give to it press before the invitations start coming press before the crusades start coming don't experiment when you're on stage men are too impatient to give you a second chance go back to the secret place do your homework that when you come out in the spirit and the power of god you will be able to validate the reality of the life and the power of god 
I am grateful to God today with all humility that he granted me the patience to stay until he came. Listen, please don't be offended. This anointing thing, Ba, if it's there, it is there. If it is not there, it's as simple and honest as that. When you ask a woman who is a chef, Madam, please make fried rice. All she needs from you is time. You, you can guarantee that that meal is coming. If you ask me now to cook for you, as anointed as I am, uh, there is going to be a discussion between me and God this night. <laughs> we'll have to walk around angels to come and help me. After all, they made bread. So they, 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 can, they can walk around and cook. But in my own strength, whatever you see there, you just take it. Because there is no mastery. I have not paid the price to gain mastery in that area. But you come to any of our mothers and say, Mothers, we want to eat this tomorrow. They start laughing. You never see them say, I hope will not, the people will not. The issue of disappointment is out of the, the question. This is what I want you to get into in the spirit. That you can get to a point where when people come to meet you, when they see you as a man of God, they start rejoicing. Because they can say in the name of Jesus, we know that this challenge truly has come to end. Hallelujah. A man of God once packaged a seed to sow into my life and I told him for what? He said for increase. I said if you don't rise, come back and collect your money because that would be a scam. That would be that I cheated you. If you actually carry your seed believing that I'm a representative of the kingdom and you sow it and you go back and nothing happens, I deceived you. Come back and collect your money with honor. The anointing is in levels and the anointing is in dimensions. I may not have all the time to teach everything but I need to say this so that we'll start praying. Please listen. The anointing is in levels. That means two people can have the same kind of anointing. Maybe a healing anointing or a prophetic anointing but it is in levels. Are we together now? Ezekiel 47 that he took me and showed me a river that came from the north of the, the east side of the temple and he began to list levels the similitude of the anointing that means that means that a number of people can be called into the same operation but the level they have pressed into i wish i had time to walk this please one person come any one person look at this everybody look at this if this brother has god forbid say a cause in his life okay and this guy is suffering from delay and this guy is suffering from sickness are we together and this guy is suffering from oppression there is need for breakthrough how many of you know that he needs the power of god in his life is that true now if i come as a man of god pastors lend this this is a, a big revelation if i meet this person i will tell him in the name of jesus be free from that oppression now watch this every dimension of problem in his life has a level of anointing that takes it away so while you are praying generically are we together now the anointing that is upon you starts scanning through the problems in his life and only solves the one that is within its level for instance please you have to understand this Let's assume, I want to use monetary value so that we can understand. Let's assume that this man, his headache requires 1,000 naira worth of the anointing. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Just for, and he has a problem of delay. And that problem of delay will require a 50,000 naira worth of the anointing. And as a man of God, I come with 3,000 naira worth of anointing. Now, I am anointed while i pray for him the only problems that will be solved in his life are the problems that are below my level of anointing 
this is the mystery behind certain conditions that seem not to change every challenge is at the mercy of the level of grace that confronts it this is why although you are anointed God still says rise higher because as more members are coming the challenges that they are bringing your current level of grace may not be able to solve it so he said grow he said grace and peace be multiplied to you you know the kind of anointing you carry by the testimonies that recycle in your life there are certain testimonies that just does not seem to happen but when you contend in the secret place suddenly newer dimensions of results an upgrade has happened to you in the spirit and when god wants to lift you higher he will organize conferences like this he says for i long to see you that i may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end my goal is your establishment hallelujah and part of the apostolic and prophetic ministry is vested by grace through the election of grace are we together now to supply to the body of christ and to territories the dimensions that are either missing or weak as far as their establishment is concerned so it is part of the apostolic ministry by the spirit to scan to a territory and see the graces that are absent or the graces that are not in sufficiency and then by the supply of the spirit provide that dimension so that the testimonies that were not heard will now be heard if this does not happen we only waste our time in conferences Are we blessed so after conferences like this we hear that fire is burning in church a and demons move to church b for refuge before they get there fire is also burning there it's like beacons of fire this is how you drive spirits out of a territory because spirits don't leave a territory they move from a place of comfort to a place of comfort when every place is on fire they will have no option than to leave so you will find out that certain widespread vices suddenly begin to leave a particular region smoking for instance prostitution or whatever and you find out that after a while these spirits move to a, another region and you find out that that region is already manifesting those qualities young men who were not seen to smoking before suddenly the devil gets one envoy and he begins to initiate others then suddenly another kind happens but when there is fire burning all of a sudden you will hear that ah the police has arrested a group of thugs that disturb a territory sanity is now returning and you hear that there are prayer groups that are rising young boys who just feel let's be spending three hours on and my hopes only hopes that you get to that point i know what i'm saying because human beings in a big acknowledge the grace of god upon your life can go as far as their own or can take them to. And sometimes it can almost become like human worship. It's up to you to have the sense enough to know that there is one greater than me and unashamedly acknowledge you. And God says, You did this for me. You stood in the presence of people to let them know that you were a best in that way. Let's pass to the next step. You are ready to go to the next step. I like you to pray, cause pride, cause loss, cause
do well to open up your heart tomorrow, but just one prayer. Father, that my heart is open, I pray. Let the grace I need come for this service to follow me back. Let something I can do with the heart come for you. Let that motion for me. If someone is praying for me, please do the word for me. from the depth of your heart everyone together in the cross
Lord, we love you and we're not pretending it. This is from the depth of our hearts. You do not call the seed of Jacob to seek you in vain. Our hearts are opened and we pray that you will bless, you will build, you will change our lives, O oh God. Let it indeed be a service worth our coming this morning. We honor you, we are listeners, we are receivers. We pray that this morning there will be the hearing of faith and the walking of miracles. And we vow as always that Jesus will continually be glorified in our midst. In the name of Jesus. Visit us, O God, even as you have spoken. In the name of Jesus. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here. Set our hearts so you do. We need a move. We need a move. Turn that song into a prayer. Just sing one time and we're seated. We are here for you with our burdens, with our troubles. With our desires, with our expectations. For everyone that cometh unto God must believe that He is. Even the rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So you do what you do. God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated again. Amen. Yesterday night we began discussing on matters of efficiency in the spirit. Hallelujah. I did observe just a quick recap for those who are following and for those who were not here yesterday. We established the fact that the Bible tells us that all of us in Christ are the called that we are called and he calls it a holy calling so we've established the fact that all believers in Christ according to scripture are called but then that second Peter chapter 1 and verse 10 says it is my responsibility and your responsibility to make our calling and our election sure that even though we are the called and we are the chosen in Christ and by Christ that we have a responsibility please pay attention to make our callings and our elections sure and we did say that all of the dimensions in the kingdom that we continue to search for is to the end that we be equipped to make our calling and our election sure that one of these provisions that empowers the saints to be able to be efficient is the anointing we discussed that the anointing is a system that legitimizes the operation of a believer it is like your authorization to represent his majesty in this side of his kingdom we did observe also that the anointing is God's ability at work in a human or a material vessel to produce God's dimension of results. The Bible says it is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous. It is only marvelous when it is the Lord's doing. If it is man's doing, it is natural. You don't clap for me for walking. But when a man begins to fly, it is not given to men ordinarily. And so you know that that is now a supernatural dimension are we together and i did observe yesterday night that there are requirements we call them a prize there is a prize for the anointing when you really really want to access the anointing of the holy spirit 
there is a price and the price is hidden in a statement in proverbs chapter 23 we'll pick it up from there proverbs 23 please help us media and verse 26 the first price for the anointing upon the life of a believer is captured in the mystery of the first two words my son my son the first prize for the anointing is intimacy relationship you cannot be anointed from afar so he has to draw you to the place of sonship that the anointing is the business of a family it is a family affair you cannot host the anointing of the holy spirit being a stranger he says but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded so when God is beckoning on men to obtain and to receive the anointing, his first clarion call is not to come and receive. It is my son. Come closer. Move closer to the place of intimacy. Pass the gates of church. Pass the gates of religion. Pass the gates of man of God and woman of God. Pass the gates of apostle and prophet and teacher and all of these things. Come to a place of intimacy and fellowship price number one price number two we established yesterday still the same scripture please give it to us it says my son give me your heart that is the second requirement surrender the first price is the price of intimacy and fellowship with God the second price is the price of total absolute unreserved surrender You may have heard me say it in my teachings that the price for all of God is all of you. The price for all of God is not your offering. No. Not your intellect. No. That's too small. The price for all of God is all of you. When you want all of God, what you give, the, the payment is all of you. Are we together? So price number one, my son intimacy draw close the bible says no eye had seen paul was speaking to the church in corinth no ear has heard neither has it entered into the heart of man the bible says what god has prepared not for prayer warriors not for fasting giants not for ministers for them that love him and then number three for this service the third price is let your eyes observe my ways so price number one my son build intimacy price number two give me your heart total surrender price number three let your heart observe my ways let your heart observe my ways I think it's Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4. Please give it to us. Let me just confirm that it's that scripture. Very powerful scripture. Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's read from verse 3 and then 4. I wish we can have amplified. Is it, is it possible to have amplified? The media. Beautiful. If you can have amplified, just give us just for 3 and 4. Now watch this. It said, God approaching from Sinai came from Teman. And the Holy One from Mount Paran, it says, His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of His praise. Read verse 4 and never forget this scripture for the rest of your life. Let's go together when we have it. One to read. And His brightness was like the sunlight. Rays streamed from His hand. And there in the sunlight splendor, was the hiding place of his power so god's power has a location his power hides in his light are we together now so when he says observe my ways my power is hidden in my ways the light and the illumination that comes from knowing my ways is where your power and your authority comes from I did share yesterday that the word of God is like a tray and it carries all the possibilities that can come in God on top of it so when his word is coming to you you celebrate the word not because of the word in itself but its ability to carry everything God 
when the word of god comes to you in that word is your healing in that word is your deliverance in that word is your breakthrough are we together the bible says in that light that comes from his hand is the hiding place of his power lord where is your power is hidden in my light so when i want to make you powerful i come to you as light that spiritual illumination please listen to me most people have not been able to walk in kingdom power and authority because there is so much spiritual information in the body of christ but very few people have access to what the bible calls the mysteries of the kingdom please pay attention not every spiritual information is for the profiting of the saints just because it is spiritual does not mean it will profit you when you study the world's religion every one of them is shrouded in secrets and mysteries that have their origin from the realm of the spirit so celebrating spiritual information does not mean you have enlightenment this is where i believe the pride of our generation lies we pride ourselves in the fact that we have scarce spiritual information and we think just because this information is not science based that means we are powerful it's not necessarily so when you ask people who practice occultism their entire life is immersed in spiritual information when you ask people who practice voodoo and practice all of, there is none of them that is ignorant as far as spiritual information is concerned Moses before he met the God of the Bible was more learned than most Christians he was being trained to be the next Pharaoh and Pharaoh was Egypt was the center of both science and wizardry so he was not in ignorance today there are still books that Moses wrote before he met God there were archives of his dealings and those books today are used in the occult are we together now I know you know what I'm talking about there, there are books that were written by Moses before he met the God of the Bible there were an archive of his education his tutorials were recorded and there are still people using it today because for you to become a Pharaoh in Egypt you had to be a wizard not a man those teachings will change you from being a man into a wizard that's why God had to train Moses to go back and meet Pharaoh because the then Pharaoh would was his half brother Ramesses so when Moses came back and said let my people go he said Moses you know these things we were trained together you want to die for nothing you just meet this God in a forest and come to meet Egypt the center of wizardry so what token did he give you in the wilderness and he threw his staff and Pharaoh laughed and said shame on you you have forgotten that this is a place of witchcraft you come to scare us with a snake Janus, Jambers, come and show this man that this place is also a center of wizardry and they threw their rods too they didn't pray on it they all stopped talking and allowed their revelations to keep speaking This is not my sermon i'm just i'm just encouraging us there are many dimensions of useless spiritual information that does not profit the saints neither advance the cause of the kingdom most of this information came as a result of the pride of men to search what seems to give them an edge but these things that's why the bible says when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you there are books today that have been written that are deceiving the body of christ because these books did not come under the leadership of the holy spirit they just came after men who wanted to just move forward in life and some of these people sincerely so some of them there are people who have gone for prayer and fasting programs and encountered demonic spirits that downloaded all kinds of supernatural things supposedly and these things continue to confuse the body let your eyes observe not just see observe because there are many things that will look like it but it's not it
let your eyes observe my ways are we blessed this morning we are discussing the anointing if Janus and Jambers can turn a rod to a serpent that means they can make someone stand up from the wheelchair too do you agree with me I'm not being critical that means they can program a climate of favor on your shop too and in one day you will get from your shop what you had not gotten in one year so what then is the need for the Holy Spirit what then is the need for the anointing look at the story of Moses the Bible says when the serpents were on the ground seeing that they were both serpents pressure came upon the integrity of Elohim and he caused a serpent the serpent of Moses to swallow the rod do you know what that meant no magic again because those rods you see were not ordinary rods you couldn't do magic without them now he swallowed it and yet did not increase in size and said you explain this mystery that I ate another rod master over time and matter he demonstrated there that I am Lord of the universe are we together we become powerful in this kingdom when we understand the mysteries of the kingdom the mysteries of the kingdom activate the power of God in the life of the saints please understand this we are a power generation we like power and that's wonderful we like miracles signs wonders manifestations of the spirit and, and there's nothing wrong with that in itself except for the fact that most people do not want to pay the price to sit with scripture and understand the doctrine of scripture and the truth upon which our faith is built and not knowing this will make you to misuse the anointing and sometimes not even access it at all are we together now yes the imbalances in the misuse of the anointing is because believers do not know the ways of God I'll give you an example let's assume for instance that I am prophesying to say this man of God and the Lord opens my eyes in the realm of the spirit and I suddenly look at a man of God dressed beautifully dressed in white suit and I see a horn on him or I see something demonic now you see that vision is God attempting to show me something but my understanding of scripture should already reveal to me the character of God and how he operates which should inform the way I will interpret that vision if I am not grounded in the word I'm just going to say what I see and saying what I see in the hearing of natural men will mislead them I did not see wrong but my not knowing the ways of God did not culture my interpretation so it ends up creating another error and I am surprised that while I am prophesying people are leaving God are we together yes. for instance when I look at this man and I see what looks like evil I know according to scripture that the believer has been given the ministry of reconciliation number two it is not God's desire listen to me it is not in the character of God to watch a man have a challenge in his life and then allow that man to just go and die in perdition especially that he's a preacher of the gospel are we together now so I know that God may be showing me something that may be wrong with this man's foundation it does not mean the man is evil it is left for me now to use the lens of scripture and doctrine in my administering the power of God sometimes it may require for the sake of those he has influence over to see him in private because delivering this message in an attempt to reveal God's counsel will demean his leadership and his influence all this one now is not the anointing it is your understanding of scripture our fathers and the patriarchs that have gone you know many of them have gone to be with the Lord they access strange dimensions of the anointing some of them while praying in the forest fasting they encountered God in many great ways 
and because some of them were not educated in as much as we know education to be and then some of them did not have the opportunity to be enlightened their limitations intellectually affected their dispensing of the anointing many of them what the anointing upon them could do they never were able to do it in their lifetime because knowledge did not give space for the multifaceted dimensions of the anointing in them to find expression now when you come and receive the same anointing they had it will look like you receive something greater but your knowledge now gives it more expression let your eyes observe my way If someone comes to you now and says apostle or pastor I'm in a financial trouble if all you know is just anointing you will just lay hands on him and say in the name of Jesus it is done because of the dimension of the prophetic at work in you he will get a breakthrough but he will not be blessed he will get that breakthrough for a while and solve the current problem but sustainably he's not going to increase because there are principles that are responsible for sustainable increase and since you have just limited him to the prophetic operation of the anointing he will keep coming back to you every time he's in trouble are we together my son give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways jesus was training the disciples and like I told you yesterday, you never see the mention of anointing maybe more than two or three times in the entire gospel. No. The Beatitudes, the teachings of the kingdom. Yet he was preparing all these people to carry his anointing. And you do not hear mention of anointing in his lectures. He was just teaching them. You, your eyes, the light of the body. You are a city set on a hill. This, your law says this, but this is what I now say. When he had now prepared them to the point that when he rose again, he didn't even have time to celebrate his victory. He said, guys, let's go back and have lectures. In 50 days, the Holy Ghost is coming upon you and I must finish what I'm teaching you. Let him not come upon minds that are not enlightened. And when he was done with them, he said, Tari, 10 more days and that power comes upon you. listen to me when God wants to truly anoint you he brings you to the school of the spirit and teaches you the ways of God not the anointing the ways of God are we together it teaches you the ways of God that is the mystery of the making of men he says follow me and I will make you he makes you and then empowers you if you do not submit to his making and the making comes through the word he builds you up empowers you the light from that illumination now strengthens you and when that engracing comes you become a cutting edge battle axe because you have been thoroughly furnished in the spirit excesses of imbalance out of your life the side effect of manifesting the anointing without the word is error and imbalance when you become a dispenser of the anointing and you are not guided by the coordinates of the word look at me i hope you know in the parable of the ten virgins the oil was trapped inside the lamb the oil found is relevant provided it was inside the coordinates of the lamp and that lamp is the word of god so the oil finds expression provided it is trapped in that container of the lamp if all you have is oil it will not profit you the oil's relevance is found when it is inside the lamp are we together now He says go and meet them that sell buy oil put it in your lamp then the lamp will continue to burn strengthened by the oil the whole goal is not the oil the whole goal is not the lamp the goal is light 
but the dynamics of that light is the union of the oil and the lamb let your eyes observe my ways very quickly why do we need the anointing let me just rush to touch on these areas because we are discussing the anointing why do we need the anointing it's important for us to understand why we need the anointing why does the believer need the anointing number one to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and the advancement of the kingdom why do we need the anointing that engracing of the spirit to subdue the forces of darkness that war against our destinies and against the advancement of the kingdom psalm 66 and verse 3 say unto god it says how terrible art thou in your ways psalm 66 and verse 3 through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you not through your being alive not through your being a preacher scripture did not leave us in the dark ladies and gentlemen as to the fact that the whole world lies in wickedness it is true an uncomfortable truth but it is true that our world is a wicked place there are spirits that predate the existence of men in fraternity with men to destroy destinies and to sabotage ultimately the purposes of God and it takes the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit to subdue them Isaiah 10 and verse 27 it says it shall come to pass on that day please give it to us it shall come to pass on that day Isaiah chapter 10 27 that the burden shall be taken away from your shoulder if it is taken away God did not put it there it says and the yoke from off your neck if you have both a yoke and a burden upon you already that will impede your advancement and it says it shall be destroyed because of the anointing there are yokes that sit upon the lives and the destinies of people when jesus came making his own manifesto in luke chapter 4 we make reference to that also in isaiah chapter 61 the messianic prophecy please give it to us let's read the first four verses isaiah 61 the spirit of the lord god he says is upon me because the lord hath anointed me for these number one to preach good tidings to the poor it takes the anointing to preach good tidings to the poor it takes more than sympathy it takes more than empathy it takes the anointing of the spirit number two he had sent me authorized me by the anointing to bind up the brokenhearted kjv please and then number three to proclaim liberty it says thank you to the captives you don't proclaim liberty just because you have a voice be free no that when you announce that there is an anointing that can break every yoke and set the captives free to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison my goodness my god that means there are human beings who are walking bishop on earth moving physically yet in the realm of the spirit there are doors and prisons locking them there are families sincere people they can travel to the u.s come back travel to the um, uk come back go all around the world have all their education or whatever it is but according to the revelation of scripture they are locked up in prison houses waiting for the anointing to open that door can i tell you this time does not open the door is the anointing that opens it you can be in that prison door give birth to your children in that prison give birth to your grandchildren in that prison but i come in the name of jesus this morning by the grace and the power of the holy spirit that everyone here every family locked up and chained in all kinds of prisons in the name of jesus listening and following online from whatever nation and here in asaba 
I declare by the Spirit of God for that door that has been closed Efata be open now 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 let's sit down it is because the prison door is closed that's why you can be looking at your destiny helper he's close to you yet you don't know there is a divide between you and him he can bless and help everybody around you and say come back please be sensitive this morning we came for very serious business give us back that scripture please verse 2 to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn these are the things the anointing does to appoint unto them that mourn I like this do you know what this means set a date for their deliverance mm. it doesn't mean announce set a date you can call their deliverance today and it will happen to appoint unto them that morning Zion it says to give them beauty for ashes the garment of praise for what the spirit of heaviness that they might be called oaks or trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified in their lives verse 3 verse okay verse 4 now and they shall build the old wastes so it takes the anointing that what my father could not do I once heard that there was greatness in this family I once heard that we were great people that this family had men and women of God men of fire that when the missionaries came this was the family that supported them but right now there is almost no one who believes in God in this family it says to build back the old ways to say no way we must get back to the spiritual heritage there are many of you you go back to the archives in your family and you find out that you your grandparents were part of the cutting edge activity of the spirit but as it is now there is almost no one aside from you that calls upon the name of the Lord to build back the old waste it says they shall raise up the former desolations they shall repair the waste cities the desolations of many generations all by the anointing all by the anointing so we need the anointing to subdue the forces of darkness that fight against our destinies and against the kingdom of God. Look up please, let me tell you this. If the average believer is ever aware at the schemings of darkness over your life, that alone will motivate you to take God seriously. I think that because of, now I don't mean to insult technology and our you know secular living i have profound respect for it but i think most believers have been blinded at the reality if a legion of demons were in one man one there are only about maybe six to eight billion people as we know today now on earth roughly speaking that is child's play relative to the number of demons and spiritual forces that are on earth that is what child's play That means there are enough spirits to be assigned per destiny. Satan has not hidden his hatred for anything God, including you. So when you stood to give your life to Christ, you are not the only one that witnessed your salvation. The gates of darkness saw this. So finally, this family now has one person who has stood to say I am for Jesus and not only me when you were praying with your wife and saying as for me and my house we will serve the Lord it was not only you in that room and it was not angels alone the realm of the spirit was watching your prayer and they were hearing your confession and they said all right you have drawn the line and we walk carelessly just believing that in some way my life I will excel just like that we 
when jesus finished fasting the first person he saw was not an angel the first person he saw was satan satan left the whole world and was waiting patiently for 40 days there are some fastings that don't just drive demons it makes them to say what is happening in asaba we, we there is a signal an unusual angelic activities happening somewhere in asaba who is that person burning the incense of prayer it's not everything that just drives demons there are things that call them your giving your sacrifice the realm of the spirit is responding and they want to come and find out who is this and they say it's a pastor pastor they check the archives in the spirit we've not had the mention of pastor in this family where is this coming from it's coming from a young man who has covenanted with God that he will be a liberator of his family and he says draw the line whatever it will take whether it's an accident whether it's a destruction he said whatever it will, to, to, you know all those kinds of things and then scheme it to destroy him ah! but in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God I say it again that every force sitting on anyone's destiny I'm not motivating you I stand by the God who called me and I declare in the name of Jesus that their power is broken over your life broken oh, help them please help that lady broken over your family please help them in the name of Jesus I set on fire everything that is not of the Christ I destroy every yoke I stand by the God of heaven and through the voice of prophecy I arrest every spirit I arrest every ordinance speaking against you please sit down Hila sala paruza siya katabaranda katoshia shkatabala katoziata just pray in the spirit in one minute where you are seated shkatabarata zide bala hasabia hmm fire is burning in this place shkambarata skedale shabaruta ziata enough is enough it's time for destinies to shift it's time for lives to change it's time for that which was spoken concerning your life man of god are you praying enough is enough it's time to see the power the grace and the glory of god it's time for that which was written concerning me to speak are there men of prayer in asaba hallelujah in the name of jesus please sit down and be sensitive please give me volume elijah number two why do you need the anointing mm. to fulfill your divine assignment and advance the kingdom of god the second reason why you need the anointing is to fulfill your divine assignment hear me thank god for skill thank god for your abilities thank god for your human potentials but in this kingdom human potentials can only take us so far you cannot do kingdom assignments ultimately in the strength of the flesh you will need an empowerment from heaven are we blessed yes you cannot heal the sick set the captives free fulfill your god-given assignment just using the force of intellect just using the force of secular knowledge thank god for your education thank god for your exposure but in all you're getting get authentic spiritual power
dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.